Hello, I am K. Balakrishnan and this is the Lens on News Pitch Report, our special presentation on the Lok Sabha elections now underway in this country. In these reports, we shall be focusing on the ground situation and key states. And with me is uh, Mr. G. V. R. Nasima Rao, uh, the well known psychologist and member of the BJP. Mr. Rao, in this very long, drawn out uh, nine phase elections of 2014, uh, which are the states, in your opinion, which will have the greatest impact on the electoral outcome at the overall outcome at the centre? I, I think uh, uh, this election, I think every state would be important, uh, but then there are certain states which um, are not very easy to really know, which are likely to be vital in determining the final tally for different parties. And, and these are five battleground states. I would consider Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh, Uttar Pradesh, Bihar. I think to my mind these are very, very, very critical states. And uh, Karnataka. While, while the Karnataka also. Karnataka. While the trends in UP and Bihar, I think have been very, very clear for a long time. I think uh, Tamil Nadu and Andhra have actually had uh, uh, alliances in the making almost till the, till the onset of uh, the electoral process. I think this is something, I think these are the states which would really have a huge uh, uh, impact on the final outcome. These are the states that we will be uh, looking at in successive uh, episodes of the Lens on News Pitch Report. Uh, we have already uh, discussed Tamil Nadu and today I would like to discuss with Mr. Mr. Rao the, some of the states which, were, uh, which went to the polls in the third phase yesterday, particularly Delhi, Haryana and Western Uttar Pradesh. Yeah, uh, but before that, uh, there are some interesting uh, uh, insights that I think we should uh, we would like to bring out. But in the last, if you look at the voter participation, the voter turnout in elections, I think we have seen a huge jump in uh, voter turnout across all states, including Northeast, Assam, all states in the Northeast. Then a uh, huge increase in, in a place like Delhi, where it has been it has been becoming increasingly difficult to really get the vote, but or, vote uh, get the middle class vote out. But uh, the Delhi had experienced a very high turnout. Haryana has experienced a very high turnout. No, historically so, high. So turnout. historically, if you look at the electoral trends, an interesting insight that comes out is any election in the, the all the wave elections that this country has seen in the in the 40 odd years in the last 40 and or more years there have been five wave elections starting with 1977 uh, the emergency anti congress uh, vote in 1977 then uh, 1984, 1984 was a pro-Congress pro wave right. because after the assassination of uh, Indira Gandhi, Gandhi, I think there was a huge pro-Congress vote uh, uh, in favor of uh, Rajiv Gandhi and that was in 1984, that was a wave election. 1989 was a Beaufort election where Congress was voted out, that was also a wave election and then 1998 when NDA belying all predictions, I think NDA came to power for the first time and NDA won the mandate once, once again in 1999. These five, to my mind, qualified to be wave elections which have thrown up unprecedented uh, electoral mandates. And unexpected mandates. mandates. In all these five elections, the voter turnout was 60% and higher. So what we are witnessing today, more than 100 parliamentary consciences have already gone to polls, about 104 or so, and uh, uh, so a fifth of uh, a country has already voted. And we are seeing uh, in the last Lok Sabha elections in 2009, we had a turnout of 50, I think 58%. Same was the story in, uh, in uh, 2004. So this election is turning out to be a high turnout election which could possibly break the previous record of 64% in 1984. So you can really imagine what's happening on the ground. Uh, uh, there is a huge uh, momentous shift of electoral preferences that's happening on the ground. Is it, what is happening on the ground is behind this wave, is it an anti-incumbency uh, alone or is it something more? I, th I think it's a combination of both and, and certainly I see this as a pro uh, 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 BJP, pro Narendra Modi wave. Uh, more than, okay, obviously the, the anger against the government, UPA government at the center has certainly 
helped consolidating this particular uh, but then, game. But then there is an alternative, that is the biggest thing. Yeah, it? that's an alternative. Because, because there is an alternative, there is a movement towards it. Yeah, if you, if you have watched television over the last week or so, I think you would, this had been uh, uh, the, the pre-eminent topic for discussion. Is there a wave? Mm -hmm. Is there a body wave? I think the, the polling percentages really speak for it. The kind of public enthusiasm is certainly unprecedented. We have never seen something like this before. Can we now discuss uh, Delhi? Uh, Delhi with its uh, seven seats which uh, all of them were in favor of uh, the Congress the last time and uh, uh, now there is a new factor that is it's not merely Congress versus BJP now it is going to be half party again is a big factor in this election. Yes. So it's a three way contest. Uh, it, how it, 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 it was uh, built to be a three way contest but uh, practically the Congress is out of the reckoning. The Congress in a way has become uh, the BSP uh, in the last elections. Uh, you see, if you've seen in the last uh, couple of elections in Delhi, the assembly elections particularly, the BSP used to get a sizable chunk of vote. Now Congress is now, I think some seats they might possibly deposit, uh, lose their uh, deposits, forfeit their deposits. So the ARP was a big, I think, player in the last assembly elections. It continues to be an important player now, but the kind of public uh, disaffection uh, yes. middle classes voted heavily for Ahmad Bin Party, particularly women in the last assembly elections, where they put up that surprising uh, standing performance with, with their debut. Uh, but but it was they, they could not surpass. The BJP had a sizable lead in terms of votes and vote seats and, and in assembly elections itself. And according to my reading, this gap only has widened. That's right. the, the, the BJP is the favorite to win these elections and people want stability, people want a government that can really deliver, people want a leader who can lead. I think unfortunately for the Aam Army Party, they have, they have lost the sheen, they have lost the trust of the electorate who had great hopes in them because the, the way they have run this administration and the, the way they have thrown up uh, this government and in the hope of uh, winning the mirage, a national mirage really lured them into throwing this government and that has cost them heavily. I, I think this election to my mind, they are not a player anywhere in the country. But even in Delhi, I think they have really got relegated to a, a distant second position. And now looking at Haryana, in Haryana you have again uh, the Congress is the ruling uh, no party suffering a great amount of anti-incumbency. But besides the BJP as a challenger, you have other players like INLD and again the Ahmadbi Party. Ahmadbi Party was particularly expected to do well in the Delhi NCR region, but uh, is that going to be... No, I think surprisingly the Aam Aadmi Party has really not been able to make a mark in Haryana from whatever ground reports that we have. Um, I think it's primarily to my mind, it's a, it's a, the BJP is certainly, <coughs> sorry, BJP is certainly in the lead and, uh, and uh, uh, it's the INLD and the Congress. It, it's a triangular contest, but we certainly think the BJP is way ahead and INLD has come back. Uh, uh, I think although this, uh, the, the, the Choctawlas have been jailed, I think there is, uh, they have been able to retain their caste support base to a certain extent. So I think they are, we certainly see them as uh, one of the challengers. But Aam Admi Party has uh, uh, certainly not been able to make a mark in the context of Haryana. And the other state uh, that has really, uh, that's of great significance yesterday was Western Yotu. Western Uttar Pradesh, where uh, I think uh, everybody is looking at a very sharp polarization. Polarization which is uh, perhaps benefiting BJP on one side and on the other side, is it uh, the Congress or the Samajwadi Party with uh, BSP also playing a role in pitching for the Muslim vote? Well, okay, but, but you see, um, although a lot is spoken of uh, uh, this polarization, in a way this election is polarized, not yes. just in Western UP, all over the country, all over the country. but this polarization is not on religious and communal lines. Mm -hmm. This polarization is, ha is happening on misgovernance versus promise uh, of a good governance. 
corruption of the UPA on the one side vis-a-vis -vis, uh, a clean leadership that's uh, that's on offer from the BJP side in the in the in the in the name of Mr. Narendra Modi as the prime ministerial candidate. So it's a completely there is not really no religious polarization that has really happened. But in UP we have done number of polls. What comes out? The support for the BJP led by Mr. Narendra Modi is mainly on account of the fact that he was able to give good government in, 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 in Gujarat. The people's hope in, uh, in a Modi-led administration at the center is for good governance and not for any other reason. I think there are Western interests who will try and project this as a vote uh, uh, in favor of or against the community. But the BJP, particularly Mr. Modi, ran a very clean campaign. You are absolutely right, but at the same time, there was an effort to polarize and that has had a backlash. Huh? Yeah, and uh, particularly, they... particularly in terms of the JAT vote, which would have gone normally to RNLD a great deal and uh, in the Western UP area, but uh, perhaps it is turning towards from uh, evidence at the that ground level, it is turning towards BJP in a much greater proportion than it would have been otherwise. Yeah, but this is not because of any concert, uh, any yes. effort or an attempt. It's a backlash I, and it's it's a it's an outcome of the circumstances that have actually developed in Western Uttar Pradesh. Uh, much of it, I think the blame has to be laid at the doorstep of the Samajwadi party, which I completely mishandled. Uh, mishandled the Mujaffar Nagar rights in, in uh, about, about a year ago and also there is a widespread perception one important insight that comes out from Uttar Pradesh is the minorities are very unhappy with the way the Samajwadi party really ruled Pradesh, Uttar Pradesh and also the way they have uh, handled the rights but at the same time a large constituency of Yadavs who have traditionally been supporters of uh, the Samajwadi party are extremely unhappy with the Samajwadi party for having completely uh, uh, for having uh, having completely sided and having only cared for the interest of the minorities and ignored other communities so it's a, it's a very interesting paradox on the one hand Minorities are unhappy with the Samajwadi Party government. On the other, it's other constituent of uh, Yadavs are equally unhappy. And the BJP is certainly getting a large chunk of the votes of both Yadavs and also the Jatavs of uh, who traditionally have supported uh, Mayawati. So without such uh, a convergence of support coming from all across the voter spectrum, uh, the BJP would not have seen the kind of a bounce that the BJP has got today. But just imagine a party which has barely secured 18% votes in the last parliamentary election and, and, and barely managed to win 10 seats. And we are, all the polls today are speaking of what we have pro projected almost a year ago. That's right. I think the BJP is on its own likely to win 50 odd seats in, in a state like Uttar Pradesh giving a boost of about 40 seats from one single battleground state. That's the reason why I said UP is one very important state where which can completely, which can, which can give the, the push, the required push for the, for the BJP-led government at the center with a big tally for the BJP on its own. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Rao. And uh, the, one of the uh, most important states, most interesting states, uh, which we will be looking at, Next is Andhra Pradesh, which going into the elections is going to be one state and coming out of the elections is going to be uh, twin states of Andhra and Telangana. Uh, till next time in the Lens on News Pitch Report. Thank you.